Hi guys, today we'll talk about SDLC or what we say system development life cycle or for IT students or for the IT professional they also call it as software development life cycle. Basically what is SDLC? SDLC contains the different stages or the different phases through which a software or a system passes through its entire life. Okay. A system passes through different stages in its entire life and we call it as SDLC. So guys, today we will study the different stages of SDLC. Okay. So the first stage is, the first stage, I'll rub it. The first stage is called as recognition. of need. Now, this is the first stage in which you feel the need of a new system. There can be different reasons because of which you may need a new system. So this is the stage where you get the impulse. Okay, there is some problem with the present system and I need to get a new system. So in this stage, simply we answer a question. Why do we need a new system? So what is the issues or what are the problems with the present system so that we need a new system? So this is the first stage in which you start to get the feeling. I need something new. So we call this stage as recognition of need. Then after that, we move to next stage, okay. Stage number two, we call it as feasibility study. We call it as feasibility study, okay. First you feel we need something new, okay. Now in second stage, in second stage, we study, okay. Can we get a new system or not? Is it possible? In this stage, simply we answer a question. Is it possible to have a new system or not? If it is possible, we will go to the next stage. If it is not possible, then we will stop here. This stage is called as feasibility study. Now, how do we make sure, like whether, how do we ensure whether it is possible or not possible? So in feasibility study, we study different types of feasibilities. First feasibility is related to the cost. Okay. We also call it as economic feasibility. We also call it as economic feasibility. Basically, what is economic feasibility? Okay. In this we answer... A question do we have enough money to build a new system or not because you can only build a system if you have money right no money no system okay then you stop here if you have money you study the cost visit for cost feasibility you plan your budget okay then you understand yes I have enough funds I can build a new system then we study the second type of feasibility we call it as Technical feasibility. Technical. T E C H. Ah, technical feasibility. I'm sorry about my handwriting. It is really bad. So focus on my words. Do not focus on my handwriting. So then we talk about technical feasibility. Basically, what is technical feasibility? Technical feasibility is related to the technology, the environment. Okay, under which the system will work. Now you are planning for a new system, but do you have the sporting technology which will support the working of the new system or not? For example, if you plan a system which works on 5G network, right? And in your area or the region in which the system will work, there is no 5G coverage. Okay, then there is no point in building a system which works on a 5G network. All those factors, they come in something called as technical 
feasibility okay if there is no sporting technology either you will shift your focus to some other system for which the technology is available or simply you drop the idea until the technology is available after technical feasibility third and very important feasibility which is ignored a lot social sorry about that okay so the third feasibility is social feasibility so social feasibility is related to the society in which we live okay is your new system acceptable to the society or not okay now we see there are many systems which have good potential but they fail because they lack that social feasibility okay so in this system we study the social factors under which the system is working whether the society will accept your system or no then after social feasibility we have next we call it as operational operational feasibility so what is operational feasibility operational feasibility is related to the system user you are building a system for some users okay now can your users they operate that system or not sometimes guys some systems fail because the user find it difficult to use they just keep it aside because they say we are not comfortable using it or we find it very difficult to use and the system collapses okay so in this we study the operational feasibility is your user who is ultimately the end user is he qualified or is he trained enough to operate the new system or not so basically we discuss the four different types of feasible feasibility there can be more also and there are more depending upon the system and the requirements so guys after feasibility study we move to the third stage that is called as system analysis that is called as system analysis now what is system analysis no system analysis is the detailed study about a system so that we can identify the requirements or identify the needs for the new system okay so basically we are making a new system because we have some need to make it what exactly is the need the detailed study of a present system so that we can identify the different needs for which we are going to make a new system so we call this thing as a system analysis now stage 1 is also related to the need but in stage 1 we do not study the system in detail we do not identify the exact needs there we feel we need a new system here what we are doing we are conducting a detailed study of the present system so that we can understand it and we can identify what we need from the new system so that thing is called as system analysis so after analysis we move to stage number 4 that is called as system design system design basically what is design in system analysis we understood some requirements or the needs now we need to satisfy those needs how we are going to do it we are going to satisfy those needs by system design basically what is design design contains different steps which we perform in order to meet a need in order to solve a problem or in order to meet some need or the requirement so this stage is called as system design for software products we do lot of designing like interface design database design architecture design okay all the design related to the new system is performed here and in this 
the design it is more like a paperwork in which we make the system blueprints we design the system okay on a paper okay then after this we go to the next stage we call it now after the design is ready we go to system we go to system development this is stage 5 so what is system development system development is the implementation of design in stage 4 we made a design we made some blueprints now we need to implement those blueprints we need to implement that design we call it as a system development for example for a software product when you start writing the program in some programming language okay according to the design which you made we call it as a system development we call it as a system development after your system has been developed we go to next stage we call it as testing we call it as testing so guys now some of the authors they combine development and testing to gather making it as one stage some authors they write them separate both are correct both are correct so do not confuse yourself with it okay you can combine them development and testing or you can make them separate so you both both the things are fine basically what is testing now testing is the stage in which we test or we check whether the system which we have developed is meeting the needs of the user or not if it is meeting the needs of the user then very good okay then system is going towards the goal if it is not meeting the needs of the user then again you go back to system design okay then you have to redesign the system redevelop the system and retest it so that you can ensure the system is meeting the user needs okay and that process is very expensive that fix is very expensive okay so after testing after testing you have tested it now you know the system is meeting the user requirements so you go to the next stage we call it as deployment so what is deployment deployment is installing the system on the customer's site now you made a system for some client now you are installing the system at clients location so we call it as deployment and one of the most important activity of deployment is user training okay so when we install the system at the user location okay we need to train the user so that he can use the system so all those things it comes in deployment it is delivering the system or installing the system at the user's location we call it as system deployment and then comes the last stage we call it as post deployment review we call it as post deployment review so in this stage what happens is your system is installed system is working and from time to time from time to time you visit the customer or visit the site and take the review of the system whether system is working or the customer needs any updations in that or customer needs any maintenance for the system so this is the last stage we call it as post deployment review so guys this is your system development life cycle i tried to explain it quickly and i hope you understood it so thanks for watching and please like and subscribe to our channel and in case you have any feedback please leave it in the comment section thanks for watching and have a nice day